Hi everybody, this is Rob Windsor, and in this SharePoint developer walkthrough, I want to show you how to manually build a visual web part. A while ago I recorded a video that talks about the differences between the original visual web part template, the one that was included in Visual Studio 2010, and the sandbox compatible version of that template that was included in Visual Studio 2012. The details are included in this video, but the important part is that the sandbox compatible version can be error prone if you don't know how it works internally, and it's limited in its functionality. So if you're building a farm solution, it's much easier to use the original template. But unfortunately, Visual Studio 2012, and I thought Visual Studio 2013, didn't include the original template. Now, I was recently doing some work in Visual Studio 2013. I was building a farm solution. And I went to the project and right-click and chose Add New Item. And lo and behold, there were two Visual Web Part templates available. So this one is the Sandbox compatible one. This is the same template that's included in Visual Studio 2012. But we also have this one, which is the same as the template that was included in Visual Studio 2010. Uh, so if I come down here and just change the name to my web part and then click add, you'll see that this is indeed the original template. It has the code for the web part itself. And that code in the execution of create child controls loads the user control from the control templates folder in the system folders. And then down here, we have our user control. Now let's switch over to my VM that has Visual Studio 2012. And here I have a farm solution project. And if I right click and choose add new item, you see we just have the one visual web part template. And this is the sandbox compatible version. So Microsoft hasn't hopefully yet released a update to Visual Studio 2012 that adds the original Visual Web Part template back in. But that's okay because as you'll see in the rest of the demo, it's really not that hard to manually create a Visual Web Part based on the original template. So the first thing we'll do is add in the sandbox version of the template. We're doing this to ensure that the appropriate assembly references and resource files are added into our project. Um, so we need system.web, and there's some resource files that we need. Uh, but once the web part has been added, we can just go ahead immediately and delete it. All right, now to represent our visual web part, we're going to add a module. So I'll right-click on the project and choose Add New Item. And I'm going to scroll down here and find Module. And I'll call this My Web Part. And click Add. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to go back and look at what was created over here in Visual Studio 2013 and just replicate that in Visual Studio 2012. Um, so the first thing is we need the element manifest. This provisions the .webpart file into the webpart gallery. So I'll just take the contents of this, the module element and its children, and copy that to the clipboard, and then come over here and replace what's there with that. The next thing we need is the mywebpart.webpart file. So I'll just copy that file name to the clipboard, and I'll go rename this sample.txt to mywebpart.webpart. And then I'll go back to Visual Studio 2013. I'll find mywebpart.webpart. I'll copy the contents of that file to the clipboard, come over here, and replace the original contents of sample.txt with the web part XML. And coming back to Visual Studio 2013, we'll see that the other thing we need here is the mywebpart.cs, the code for the web part itself. So let me just copy all of this to the clipboard come back to Visual Studio 2012, right click on my web part, the my web part folder, and choose add class. 
I want to call this mywebpart.cs. And then down here below the code that was generated or given to us as part of the template, I'll just copy in what we had from Visual Studio 2013. Now notice this namespace is SharePoint Project 13, but up here the namespace was SharePoint Project 15. So I'll just change that. Um, our, our class is still called my web part, so that's fine. So I can just get rid of everything that the item template gave us and use what we had coming over from Visual Studio 2013. Now the fact that our namespaces are different, this is SharePoint Project 15, and over here this was SharePoint Project 13, means I'm going to need to do some cleanup over here. So one is in the mywebpart.webpart, the class name needs to have the appropriate um, namespace. And then also back in the mywebpart.cs, the path to the folder underneath control templates is going to be the same as our project name. So I need to make sure that that's changed as well. So we have the element manifest. We have the code for the web part. We have the .web part file. The one thing that's missing is the user control. Now in the visual web part template over here, the user control is contained in the folder for the web part. That's going to be a little bit different over here in Visual Studio 2012. What we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and choose, and actually before I do this, let me just copy the file name so I don't have to type that out. There we go. I'm gonna right click and choose add new item. I'm going to pick user control, uh, which is somewhere down there, it is right there. And then I'm gonna paste the file name in that we're expecting in our web part code and click add. So what that's going to do is create a map folder for control templates. This is one of the folders in the system folders. Beneath that, it's going to create a folder with the same name as our project or our, uh, actually our, our project. And then finally, it's gonna create the user control beneath there. So this path will match up to this path we have here. Actually, you know what? There's one other folder, uh, which we don't really need called my web part. So let's just get rid of that. And then coming back to the user control, um, we have all the appropriate assembly directives, the registers, imports, so we can just actually put in our content. So let's just put in um, H2 and say this is my web part. The final step is to ensure that our .web part file, or our module, has been included in this feature. It has, so we should be good to go. So let's right click and choose deploy. Uh, where's our output here? Um, so you can see our package is being created. It's activating the feature, which will push the .web part file into the web part gallery. That's done. So now we can come back here. First, let's refresh the site. And then let's go to um, our site contents. Let's go to the site pages. Let's create a new web part page. We'll call this page test. It will be a full page vertical, or at least it'll have one uh, full page web part uh, zone. That'll go in the site pages library. We'll click create. We'll click add a web part. Uh, under custom, there should be our web part. And then we'll go ahead and click add. Oh, could not be found or is not registered as safe. Oh, okay, I forgot one step. So if we come over to our project here and I click on the My Web Part node and press F4 um, and then try to get the properties window to expand. Um, you can see this entry called Save Control Entries. And in here, there's an entry that indicates that the assembly that implements the web part is safe to execute within SharePoint. Okay, so when you create a web part of any kind, you need to put this save control entry in the web config, and that's exactly what this is doing here. When I created the module 
in the other project, it did not automatically create that save control entry. So I need to come back over to our My Web part, open up the Properties window, come down to Save Controls, click Add. That will add in the new save control that I need, or the save control entry that I need to enable SharePoint to run the assembly that implements our web part. So I'll click OK here. I'll redeploy. Come back to SharePoint. Stop editing the page. Here I'm waiting for the dynamic recompilation to happen. All right, now that that's complete, I'll put the page back into edit mode. Click add a web part. Click custom. Pick my web part. Click add. And there you can see it's been added to the page. So the process of manually creating a visual web part is not difficult as long as you know the mechanics. Um, sorry, my mouse is giving me a little bit of issues here. Um, but again, if we come down, you create a module. You modify the element manifest to provision the .web part file into the gallery. You change the sample.txt file into the file which contains the XML for the web part. You add the code for the web part. And then finally, you add the user control, which gets loaded by the web part. Or sorry, that wasn't finally, because we did know there was one more step. We add the save control entry that enables SharePoint to execute the assembly, which implements the web part. So that's how to create a visual web part, which emulates the original visual web part template we had in Visual Studio 2010.